Hi, my name is Rachel Way, and for my Humanities Core research paper, I will be focusing on the role of fur in status, currency, and the male gaze. My primary source is a magazine from the 1920s about women's fur garment trends published by the Fur Vogue Publishing Company. In this December 1921 issue, fur merchants discuss why it is indispensable for every woman to own multiple fur coats for diverse social occasions in order to establish social standing. An array of advertisements offering fur garments, fur dyes, and seasons greetings complete the publication. After the First World War, Americans celebrated their liberation from their previously grueling life, including being free from saving money by eagerly splurging on extravagant goods such as fancy clothing and luxurious furniture sets through purchasing on credit. With more time for leisurely activities like attending operas, parties, and dance nights, women in the post-war era flocked to more relaxed, athletic, and revealing silhouettes, including fur garments. German fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld once famously said, open quote, in a meat-eating world, wearing leather for shoes and clothes and even handbags, the discussion of fur is childish, end quote. In today's luxury fashion, fur is still highly coveted because of its unattainability in terms of price, quality, and quantity. Unlike pieces from the 20s, furs are no longer mass-produced and affordable. They are marketed as exclusive items that only the rich can acquire. However, the efforts of organizations such as PETA have quickly changed the fashion industry's usage of fur within the past 30 years through campaigns such as the I'd Rather Go Naked Than Wear Fur campaign, which features celebrities like Pamela Anderson and Tyra Banks. While this campaign was arguably unorthodox and sexually charged, PETA effectively communicated their message. Consumers only began opening up to the anti-fur movement in the 70s when standards of living improved after World War II. People started considering the moral implications of their decisions, as is evident with the popularity of The Body Shop, an ethical and affordable cosmetics brand. British Museum curator Andrew Bolton called this guilt politics, which, open quote, urged women to reject fur in order to exhibit a morally as opposed to a materially superior status, end quote. As Ram Chandani and Kost Manierch state in response, these contributions created the idea that, open quote, being ethical could also be fashionable, end quote. For the 1920s middle class, status was constructed through one's immediate wealth and how many goods you could purchase instead of through inheritances. Furs were replaced often and lacked use value. In today's luxury fashion, fur-using designers exclude both use value and the middle class. Luxury designers like Karl Lagerfeld market to the upper class who now define what's classy in fashion. However, Lagerfeld's quote suggests that the wealthy don't need to worry about ethics and that everything revolves around fashion. Based on the figures in the PETA ads, status is defined by beauty standards and body fitness. All of the celebrities are more physically fit than the average population and hypersexualized. Status is established through their nudity and presence. Female viewers may see the ads, which mostly feature women, and wish to be as sexually appealing as the depicted celebrity. As a result, a currency is created from women wanting to achieve that body shape, and so they tell themselves that in order to do that, they shouldn't wear fur. Since the 1920s, fur has had a pivotal role in determining social status in American culture, but in different ways throughout the decades. However, our relationship to fur has almost always been viewed through the male gaze from the sexualized images of scantily clad women to the articles written by male fur merchants in the 1921 Fur Age magazine. In one such article, it was declared that any anti-fur sentiments at the time were due to women overthinking when so many demanded meat three times a day without a second thought. One remarkable instance when the male gaze seemed less prominent was with the body shop's marketing of ethical, reasonably priced goods that women loved. Here, the female consumer wants to be represented by what she purchases. The brand's founder, Anita Roddick, even went on to align her brand with the Against Animal Testing campaign. From these sources, it can be seen that fur has been treated differently over time due to changes in how status is perceived and expressed. However, fur has consistently been incorporated into characterizing and enforcing social standards and identities in American culture. Interestingly enough, it seems that a relationship to fur has been shifting from a primarily male gaze to more of an objective sort of gaze. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new.